the first day of the uh, 67 war was the toughest, I believe, in every pilot's life because we flew to the unknown. We didn't have any experience in such missions because this was the first time that the Israel Air Force striked air to ground on the airfields. Beforehand, the French did it in Egypt in 56, and in 48, we didn't have this kind of experience. It's the first time that the Israeli Air Force attacked air bases. And the most difficult thing to do is to take off from your base, fly over enemy territory, and do the job. This is a tough mission. operation was a complete success. In a few hours, 304 of the 419 Egyptian aircraft were destroyed before they even had a chance to take off. Part of the success was owed to the ground crews, realizing incredibly short turnaround times. Sometimes the complete rearming and refueling of a plane was carried out in less than seven and a half minutes. After another, the enemy air bases came under attack, and Jordan, Syria, and Iraq were not spared. Ten Iraqi and 53 of the 112 Syrian planes were destroyed. For all practical reasons, the Jordanian Air Force ceased to exist. But some MiGs managed to take off, most of them during the last attacks when the surprise effect was lost. During the dogfights that developed, the Mirages proved their superiority and even some misters managed to shoot down a number of MiG-21s. The final results would reveal that 79 Arab aircraft were shot down in dogfights against three Israeli ones. was an overwhelming victory, leaving Israel with complete air superiority. The progression of the Israeli ground forces was now protected against airstrikes, but for the Arab armies, the situation was desperate. During the following days, the IAF led several raids on military convoys. Even the Fuga Magistas, which were normally used as trainers, were armed for ground attack.
Escorted by Uragans, the Magisters carried out an historic strike on a military convoy caught in the Mittler Pass. Hundreds of trucks and armor became trapped, unable to protect themselves against the fury from the sky. When the smoke cleared, nothing was left but a several kilometer long ribbon of burnt out wrecks. The Egyptian soldiers returned home on foot. Combats against the Jordanians were extremely violent in the outskirts of Jerusalem. And it was only with the help of Uruguay used in the close air support role that Israeli paracommandos managed to gain control of the capital. When the armistice was finally signed on June the 10th, it was obvious that Israel was the great winner, a triumph mainly due to the Air Force. However, the Israelis had suffered many losses, 785 killed, 2,500 wounded, and 46 aircraft lost. The Arabs had lost 452 aircraft and 500 tanks, 70% of their war machine. What happened to our neighbors after the Sixth Canon War? All of them got into a kind of a shock from what an Air Force can do to other Air Forces. And they brought in the missiles from Russia. And that's how the war of attrition started. They wanted to push the missiles to the Suez Canal, and the Israeli Air Force prevented them from going to the Suez Canal. After the Six-Day War, General de Gaulle suddenly decided to stop any weapons delivery to Israel. The IAF then started negotiations with the United States, and in 1968, the first A4H Skyhawks arrived. As the years went by, other versions of the Skyhawk came into production. The A4N, for example, and its famous Camel Hump, a bulge that housed new avionics that Israel also retrofitted to its other Skyhawks. The exhaust pipe was also modified, and the aircraft was equipped for electronic warfare. In 1969, Israel received its first F-4 Phantoms. The Phantom was unquestionably the best interceptor of the 60s and had been combat proven in Vietnam. The IAF had ordered the most advanced versions of the aircraft, the F-4E, equipped with an internal gun and slatted wings. The Phantom came too late to play a decisive role in the war of attrition, but was intensively used during the Yom Kippur conflict. The war of attrition went on for three years, but it was more a succession of isolated clashes than an open conflict. The IAF took part in the battle behind the enemy lines, led raids on military and terrorist facilities, and was engaged in some sporadic dogfights. Soviet intervention became more and more obvious. The Soviets trained the Egyptians to handle surface-to-air missiles, and Russian pilots and fighter aircraft were observed in Egypt. On July 30th, 1970, an aerial battle took place between Israeli Mirages and Phantoms and Soviet MiG-21s. At the end of the engagement, five MiGs had been shot down without the loss of